637 on WMAL. This is where Washington comes to talk. And 50 years ago today, it was where the Beatles came to Washington to give their very first concert. We're celebrating that all morning long at 7.05. Mike Love of the Beach Boys gives us his perspective on the British invasion. 7.35, we'll have Representative Andy Harris, Republican from Maryland, have him weigh in on yesterday's arbitrary decision to lift the employer mandate for another year. Then at 8.05, James Rosen, Fox News, live in studio, gives us all his expertise on the Beatles. And then to round it out, 8.35, Peter noon of Herman's Hermits. He was part of that British invasion himself. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Brian Wilson. We are joined on the phone right now by David Wilde, who's a contributing editor to Rolling Stone. He has also uh, written for the Grammys uh, since 2001 and had a very interesting assignment recently as he worked on that special you may have seen Sunday night uh, where the Beatles, uh, Paul McCartney and, and, and Ringo Starr were interviewed by David Letterman. Uh, David, thanks for joining us here on Mornings on the Mall. My pleasure. All right, so tell me, I want some backstage stories. What was it like to be there on the scene as this uh, special was being taped with the last two standing Beatles? Well, I guess it was the most fab gig I've ever had, and I've been lucky to have many. Uh, for me, it was like a chance to spend a lot of January thanking the two surviving Beatles for basically having you know, changed the world and changed my life and in a million ways. It was up, uh, I can just tell you that one highlight, uh, there were many, uh, but I was rushing around for weeks between the Grammys where we had the two Beatles, the Beatles salute the other night, and also I was in this uh, Playtone uh, documentary on the 60s and the British Invasion. Between those three projects, my whole January was spent playing to, writing about, thinking about, dealing with, talking to the Beatles, and you know, it's just an unbelievable experience. But uh, the night of the Grammys, um, my wife and kids were coming backstage to see me, you know, and I'm sort of back there working with all the presenters, uh, including like Julia Roberts, who's introducing uh, Paul and his performance with Ringo that night. And my wife says, as she sees me, did you get the picture I just texted you? And I said, no. And she she showed me this picture, which is my two sons, our two sons, with Paul McCartney and this huge, all of them smiling and sort of hugging, and it it blew my mind because weirdly, Linda McCartney was the first person to tell me to marry my wife. <laughs> wow, and she's a, a significant reason I have those kids. So, and by weird coincidence, my wife and kids were just coming backstage, and Paul could not have known on any obvious level that they were my kids, but he stopped. And again, Paul is hit up for photos by everyone and but weirdly he just reached out to my kids and swore, sweetly asked them to be in this photo and that photo just says it all to me because literally i might not have my kids if it wasn't for you know uh the beatles extended family so wow I'm wow very grateful that is an amazing story uh hey david uh, david wilds our guest contributing editor of rolling stone and you know we, we're dedicating our programming this morning celebrating the 50th anniversary of the beatles here doing their first concert in washington dc talk to me about the scene there at the ed sullivan theater for the sunday night program the 50th anniversary of that landmark uh performance on the ed sullivan show well actually the way it worked is we did the event the night after the grammys which is crazy because the, the Grammys are usually so exhausting and were exhausting but at the next morning literally including like Pharrell who had been up all night celebrating his big Grammy night all the artists showed up at night we all didn't go to the parties really except maybe Pharrell and uh, we rehearsed the show and did it the next day which so the show was done there and then uh, Ringo and Paul flew to New York and went to the Sullivan Theater, and, you know, David Letterman spoke to them in that empty theater where 50 years ago, you know, they had they had played. So the special, you know, was very, it was emotional for us. But we actually did the show in L.A. at the uh, convention center right next to Staples. So, you know, for the last week of the Grammys, uh, Ken Ehrlich, the executive producer, and I and a few others were working on both shows, so we would go literally constantly across the street from one Grammy rehearsal to a Beatles rehearsal, and it was the best experience ever. So you, you say you've spent a lot of time recently thinking and writing and, and, and focusing on what the Beatles mean. What conclusions did you come to about that? Uh, it would take, 
it took all those shows and 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 it would take a lot more to explain it all uh i actually do think that you know if you watch all those shows you'll get a, a sense of what they mean to me i think they mean virtually everything i think that they were you know in the uh, playtone documentary uh the last quote they used was something i said which i don't know if it was profound enough for this but you know i think i said something along the lines of this is the greatest in a cultural sense it's the greatest love story of all time mm-hmm. i think for us to still be grappling 50 years later and not just you know i actually was too young to remember the beatles on Sullivan. i was born in the 60s but not in time to really be aware of that moment i sort of fell in love with the beatles later during their like solo years but even in my life that moment of impact and then when they sort of you know the next year or two when they were taking over america and i guess invaded uh you know washington 50 years ago yeah uh they, i think they just you know i think after in that moment after the kennedy assassination they just sort of turned the lights back on in america and really they've been burning pretty brightly for half a century. That's really a great way to put it. I mean, the country was still in mourning from President Kennedy's uh, assassination. And and I wonder, I- I- in all of your research and all the conversations you've had, uh, have they ever reflected on the fact, you know, they do the Sullivan Show, what a high that must be, then they hop on the train, come down to the nation's capital. Uh, I think it sends a message that they came here to our capital city to give their first a concert, and boy, was it historic. Well, America, and, you know, Washington being in many ways, the sort of center of America. America meant so much to them. I was talking to Ringo uh, about that a lot, you know, over the years. And recently, you know, he he in particular uh, had, like, these sort of love affair with America. All of them had a love affair with America through the music, but also just the idea of America. And I think that's one of the sort of mysterious things that's so interesting is that it took four guys from Liverpool to bring the beauty of america the dream of america back alive to us at a time when we needed it the most wow that's well listen if you are a fan of rock music pop music and all of these uh, amazing things you really need to follow david wild on twitter wild about music very easy to remember and uh, you you are a lucky man to be involved in this yeah, watch, these events watch stories oh no i feel like i uh, I, I told my wife, I've never felt so lucky or tired. <laughs> <laughs> the two go hand in hand. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thank you, David. A real pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, no, my a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you very much for asking. And by the way, I just want to mention on WMAL.com this morning, all of our special Beatles stuff uh, has been posted. You can go there and get a good look at it if you missed some of the stuff we've done earlier.